Hello. Oh, here comes more folks. Hey, Trinity. Sorry, I kind of messed up the, <laughs> if it said there was another meeting in progress for anyone, that's because I was opening the wrong link, but we seem to be good now. <laughs> We couldn't hear you, Trinity. <laughs> oh my God, I'm totally muted and just talking away, talking away. That's funny. Hi, Berkeley. I know we work in the same building, but I never see you, so it's nice to see you. Is that Berkeley's voice? Oh, there he is. Same. Same. Good to see you, Donna. <laughs> You're doing this weird echo sound, so you sound like a robot, kind of. It's da -da -da -da. I don't know why. So the meeting, it made me set a waiting room. I, I, I couldn't not do it. So I'll just keep letting people in as I see them. Great. And I set it to auto record because I thought that it was a nice function, but I can turn that off too if we don't want to have a recording. <laughs> I think it's just fine. I think I think we want it recorded. There was a request on the parents Facebook group oh. to have it be recorded for folks who couldn't make it. Perfect. So this is wonderful. Excellent. You guys, I made a PowerPoint. So I'm going to put it in the chat. Oh, and I, let me see. Should I make you the host, maybe? I can still, I can share my screen. I, I think so. Oh, you have that. Okay. No, you, no, I can't. You disabled okay. it. Um, let's see. If it's too tricky. No, I got it. Make host. I think you're the host now. Um, yeah, all of a sudden I have all these new options. But that might also mean that you are the only one seeing the waiting room. Maybe. So then you'll have to do that too. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm going to try something, see if this works. No. Okay, I think it will let me, it will let me share now. That's good. When people join, you can just, it usually just pops up in the participant list and you just say like admit. Oh, there we go. I see it people that need to be admitted. Did my Is that annoying for you? Would you rather someone else um, was the host and just like shared this? I think this is okay. okay. Um, can you guys, I just can't see anything other than the PowerPoint and then I'm admitting people. That's fine. So I'm gonna put some documents in the chat. Will somebody just keep sharing them? Sure. Okay. Can you see the chat? Um, maybe. Yes. Okay. I sure can. Let me. Sorry, I didn't mean to make everything be on your plate all of a sudden. 
<laughs> it's okay. It's my own fault for making a, a PowerPoint. <laughs> Trinity loves a good PowerPoint. I do. Oh, yeah. I like a visual. Um. <clears throat> hmm. Nope, I can't add my documents. I don't know Zoom, you guys. I'm sorry. What are you trying to do? I have two documents that I'm trying to add. Into the chat? Yes. And it won't let me link them as a file and it won't let me drag them into it either. So we'll just wing it without them. Are they on your on your desktop? Mm -hmm. If you email them to me, I could put them up. On, I can put them in our Google Drive and then make a clickable document. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question. Bashir, are you our interpreter? Yes. Are you our interpreter for our meeting? Or are you, I'm sorry, you're muted, Bashir. I can't hear you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I am, yeah. I was muted. Okay, I good to know. And Susana, wave your hand, Susana. Susana works at Marcy and she is also an interpreter as well as a staff member, as a, well as a, a, a person of all the trades at Marcy this year. So <laughs> she is her Spanish bilingual program assistant and she works at Marcy. So she's here to help those people who uh, might need a Spanish interpreter. <clears throat> Yeah, please let me know if I uh, am available here so I can help you all to understand more what's going on in our meeting. Okay, should we get started? Yeah, I, I think so. Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, so today is our very first official site council. I you guys, as I'm doing this PowerPoint, I can't see the chat. I can see people, but that's it, just so you know. So I know Donna and Berkeley and everybody will help me out if there's things that come up that I can't see. Okay. So as our first site council, I feel like the first most important thing to talk about is what is site council? So site council is a monthly meeting. It's for school administrators, school staff, it is for families, for students and community members. And our role and our purpose really is to work together to have some shared decision-making to improve achievement for Marcy students. Some of the duties that we have to do are linked to some of the funding that we receive from the federal government for our school. It's called Title I money. And there are some requirements that we have to do with a site council um to to show that we're using that money in the appropriate ways um one of those duties we will be doing tonight it's reviewing and approving a family and school compact we'll talk about that in a minute we will have a meeting next month where we <laughs> review some of our school data and talk about our school improvement plan for the year um, when it's budget time, if we have money that is not linked to directly to teachers, we're able to get feedback from site council on what we could do with that money. Um, if we have school-based decisions, this is a place where Donna and I can come and get feedback and get information from our families. And also this is a place for us to discuss any concerns that are coming up from the community and from the families that we may not be aware of or for us to do some problem solving together. Did I miss anything, Donna, that you can think of as far as site council? No, I think that's a fine description. And I know we're gonna go around and say who we are. Yes, oh my gosh, thank you, that's so important. I'm Trinity, I'm the assistant principal at Marcy. I can't see everybody's faces. Um, this usually is our number one thing that we do when we gather is we kind of 
go around and introduce ourselves. We do something called popcorning and it's where we introduce ourselves and then we say somebody else's name and it's something that we've done with our virtual meetings to help move it along so we're not just looking at each other waiting for the next person to unmute and talk. So I am going to popcorn to Claire. Claire, will you introduce yourself please and then popcorn to the next person. Absolutely. Thanks, Trinity. My name is Claire Trolley. I use she, her pronouns. I am a parent to a first grader at Marcy. And I will popcorn it over to Emmy. Hi, I'm Emmy. Um, I also use she, her pronouns, and I am the parent of a kindergartner. And I will popcorn to Abra. Hello, um, I'm Abra and I have a second grader and a fifth grader, both of whom are new to Marcy this year. So we're all learning how things are working and I will popcorn it to um, you did. That's Susanna. Susanna, uh, your hey. name you did. Yeah. Um, uh, good night, everybody. I am Noah Marcy and this year, and I work for, um, I believe for 14 years for MPS, and I'm so happy to came back and this year to school. And I am the bilingual program assistant, uh, speaking Spanish and English at the same time. Um, I'm so happy to see everybody tonight here. And, and then I will be happy to help anyone who need to understand more our English. And then, um, yeah, that's why I'm here. Thank you so much. And I popcorn to Bashir. <laughs> yes, my name is Bashir Yusuf. Uh, I'm an interpreter from INCO. Uh, so I'm just interpreting for a Somali and English and English and Somali. I don't know who I punk on to. <laughs> I don't Anybody see you see? Uh, I don't see anyone except the you. Ah, good. Okay, so then I'll take a turn. You see me okay. though, Bashir? Well, you are a lucky. Yeah, I see you. You're very lucky. My name is Donna yeah. Andrews, and I'm the principal here at Marcy. I've been here for, this is my 16th year, and um, I love our school, and this year has been very full of change. So we're trying to get our bearings and settle in, in spite of all the challenges that we've had. And it's nice to see new parents here, as well as returning parents. Um, typically, when we meet in person, we have a lot more people. So this is a lot of people online for us. So I'm glad that all of you have taken the time to join us. I'm going to popcorn to Sonia. Hi, my name is Sonia. I'm a new Marcy parent. I have um, a kindergartner who is receiving homebound special education services because of medical issues right now, um, but hopefully will eventually be able to come be in person and join the kindergarten cohort. And I'm really happy to be here. And who hasn't gone yet? Um, I can popcorn. Yeah, Berkeley, you can go. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Berkeley. I am a third grade teacher. I use he, him pronouns. Uh, this is my first year teaching at Marcy and I'm super excited to be here. Oh, I got a popcorn to somebody. Um, uh, sorry. How about Parker? Hello, I am not Parker. I'm Parker's mom. My name is Shante and I have the wrong way on. Um, just one second. <laughs> um, I'm actually writing filling out an evaluation for the school as I'm doing this so um hope oh, that ain't it anyways I use she her programs a uh, programs pronouns um I'm Parker's mom my name is Shante uh, he's a second grader and this is our third year at Marcy and I will popcorn over to Fatima um hello my name is Fatima um, she and her pronoun, pronouns. 
Um, this is my first time joining the family connection. Um, I have kindergarten, second grade, and third. And I will, who didn't go, sorry, I just kind of came late. Uh, Talia. Hi, my name is Talia. Um, I am a parent of a third grader who's right sneak it over there. There's Ramona. Um, and I'm happy to be here. Um, I think this is my second site council. And I also just wanted to, to, I don't think there's any time for this on the agenda, but I know I contacted Donna and Trinity. I'm here kind of repping a group, a small group of parents that um, want to help with parent drop off and pick up. <laughs> so someday we're going to try to sneak onto an agenda. So anyway, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm looking forward to hearing every, all the information and um, yeah, I am going to pop Horn Emmy. I've gone already. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to look in the chat then. Ah, Mike. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Hogan. Um, I have a second grader who um, went to first grade last year at Marcy, but he did the whole thing distance learning. So this is the first time he's really been in the building is this year. So he's kind of a new kid, kind of an old kid. Um, who didn't go yet? Sydney? Thanks, Mike. Um, I'm Sydney. I've been at Marcy as long as Donna. Actually longer because both my kids went through K through eight. Um, I'm the family and community liaison. So I am here if you need me. Oh shoot, I'm popcorning, is, did Abra go? Yeah. I think reason? I'm the only one that didn't go yet. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. No, no worries. I'm Kate. Uh, I have a kindergartner in Stacy's class and a third grader in Katie's class. And they both love it. Thank you, everyone. Um, and thanks, Donna, for reminding me that that's a, the best practice for us to have. And it's a nice way for all of us to put our voices into the space and get to see each other's faces and get to know each other. I, too, have a second grader that goes to school at Marcy and a fourth grader. Um, and this is my fifth year at Marcy, which is really exciting for me. I get to have the distinction of being the longest running AP at Marcy. So that's very exciting. And I love it here. And I'm so happy to be part of this community. I am going to go back to sharing my screen. I have a, a weird tendency to talk really fast and to move quickly through things. So please, if I'm moving too fast, if you have a question, put it in the chat or unmute yourself and just ask me to clarify something. I know that this is uh, one of my traits, one of the things that I'm working on, and it doesn't always translate well into online meetings. So I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen. Um, for those of you that popped in, um, we were talking a bit about what a site council is and the purpose of a site council. And we were talking about how it's a group that consists of family members, school members, community members, and our primary function is to really work towards improving uh, achievement and outcomes for Marcy students. And um, I know that Kate is going to be adding my PowerPoint to the chat. So if it's easier for you to click along, you all can have access to this if you have questions about anything. I'm gonna move on to the next slide because we have a couple of businessy items before we have time to chat. And I apologize, but there are a couple of things because we are a Title I school. Um, being a Title I school means that we have a percentage of our students that qualify for educational benefits. And so we get additional funding from the government. And we have some steps that we have to take um, required by the state so that we can account for the money that we get because we are a Title I school. And one of those things is a we have a family school compact. We present this to our families every single year at Marcy during fall conferences. And what it is is it's um, a list of the responsibilities that students have attending Marcy, responsibilities that staff members have um, as 
people that work at Marcy and responsibilities of the families that send their children to Marcy. Kate, I sent this to you as a link um, and I don't have the ability for some reason, I don't think to share it. I just shared it in the chat. Awesome. So if you have the ability to click on the link in your chat, this is the uh, school compact that we used last year. So I'd like to give everyone just a moment to read through it a little bit and you'll see the three sections. As a student at Marcy, these are my responsibilities. As a parent at Marcy, these are my responsibilities. As a staff member at Marcy, these are my responsibilities. So our, our charge tonight is to look at the family school compact and agree on the language that exists in the compact or suggest changes that we can make before we present it to our families next week during um, conferences. So I'll stop talking for a minute so everyone can look at it. As you're looking over the compact, is there anything that's jumping out at you that's language that we should reconsider or change or um, parts of the compact that you think may have applied to Marcy in the past that don't necessarily apply to who we want to be as a community now? Is there anything that anyone sees that you want to bring to the attention of the group? Trinity? This yeah. is fair. I, I have, um, there's a couple places where it says Marcy open. Oh, great. I'll fix it. Arts. Um, and then I'm also wondering in the student section if um, we should put something in about not bullying each other um, or, or standing up, um, you know, for others or, or something like that. Um, I know it says to be respectful of yourself and others, but maybe some more kind of specific language. Okay. Anyone else have feedback? I'm trying to think of how we could word that. I think it's a good point and you, we could say something like we try to frame everything in a positive way, Claire. So, so, so by saying that as a community, we, um, we pledge to stand up and um, um, I don't know, wait. We pledge to, we're pledging, pledging something about. Can we, can we pledge to uh, stand, up and stand up and speak out against injustices that we see? I like that generalized word. Yes, yep. that's good. Because we can write bullying, but we're, I think within the family school uh, compact, the positive words are best suited for everybody who will agree on that. Not that it has to be super vague, but that's a good one. I like that one. I um, see. Is there anybody yeah. else that has um, something? I think somebody unmuted. Writing something to encourage kindness and peaceful problem solving. One of the things that my children have brought home from school so far is that this is a peace school, but I don't see that reflected in the contract. Great. Great. So adding something about peaceful problem solving or those approaches to problems, I think would be a good thing. Great. Excellent. Possibly incorporating something about um, accountability or acknowledging accountability for the actions and um, maybe instead of consequences, um, accepting, you know, actions that come from it and making the better choices um, for future or in the future. 
That's a good one. We could frame it in a way that um, as, as people at Marcy, we know that everybody makes mistakes. And when we do, we work to fix them. Yep. Because that is also a strong teaching method that's used in school about, especially like in mathematics or where kids are afraid to share their answers because they're afraid to make a mistake. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. Marcy, they're kind of celebrated about their mistakes. And for kids that aren't used to that, they're a little in shock at first. Yeah. But teachers do model that and share that with the kids. So that's a really good point. Excellent. Anybody else have ideas? Okay. So I will make those changes to the, the school and family compact and does everyone agree that if we make those changes that this compact will be appropriate and good for us to share with our families and students at conferences next week? If you feel good about it, put a yes or a thumbs up in the chat. Great. All right. Ooh. Uh, the other thing I wanted to get some feedback from everybody on before we um, hand it over to Talia, because Talia, I did make you a nice little slide for your group to sh share. Um, we would. We are going to be giving as quick survey to our families at conferences and some of the things that we're trying to get information about is is finding out does your student feel cared about and listened to at school we want to know what is the best way to communicate with our families we want to know that um, if families are feeling listened to by staff and we also want to know if there are additional or more arts offerings that you would like your children to participate in um, these are some of the questions that we've put in the survey already, and I would be just wanted to open it up to the families to see if you think that there's any information that you think the school should be gathering about our families to help better serve all of you. And if nobody has any ideas, that's okay too. I'm going to give um, a little bit of teacher wait time so someone can unmute. Yeah. Um, as a parent, I would like to be asked a question like, what are your top three concerns for your child this year at school? Because we're obviously facing a lot of changes and difficulties uh, challenges as a district. And I think that would be valuable information to collect. Great. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'd add, do you feel like your child is safe at school? Again, directly related to current events. And just to differentiate a little bit, I think the phrasing is a little bit ambiguous on numbers three and four. Does staff listen to families I think uh, families might respond better to, do you feel like your children's teacher is listening to you or right. other school staff? Like those are two different, those are two different things. Yep. And also right. I think there's a little bit of ambiguity in the last question. What arts offerings would you like your students to participate in? I'm not sure if that question is existing art, arts offerings or things that aren't offered, but that you would like. And I think that's a very clear distinction that that you'll get different answers on on those questions. Great, thank you so much. Yeah, and Trinity, I'm wondering if you, we could list out as well, like what are the arts offerings, um, so that sure. people could have something to to you know think on and add to. Great. Yeah, I think Media. that's a good point. Media. Not Box everyone has had all that. Exist. Yeah, it, not everyone has had all the art options. No, not yet. <clears throat> yeah. Wonderful. Any other feedback on questions that you think it would be important for us to have answers to? Um, 
I think it would be important for us to know if uh, somehow to relate. I would I would like to know from parents if they like I'd like them to know what services we provide in our school, and that's it, not going to be a survey question because I'm not going to ask parents what do they want to see offered. So maybe it's down the road, but I do feel like with so many new families, they might be unaware of some of the supportive staff in our building who can um, who can possibly support them in different ways in their lives. So I'm not sure how to stick that in or if it's appropriate, but yeah, I like that kind of thing better because the survey should give us as staff a better idea of how to um, make them feel comfortable and welcome when we finally get the chance to be in person. And that's what I'd like to know. Great. Thanks, Donna. Yep. And I'd love to see some question about, I'm not sure exactly how to phrase it, but um, something like what aspects of your culture or identity would you like to see represented in the classroom? Um, and I'm sure a lot of them already are, but it might give teachers um, ideas for other ways that they can reflect their, their families' identities. This is great. And would you be willing to come in and help us represent your culture? Because it would be nice. A lot of times families think they just come for conferences, but it would be nice to involve more parents in creating these, these experiences for our students. Is that even an option right now? I mean, we've been told that parents aren't welcome in the building. True. They're not real. I mean, it's only because of COVID. But yeah, but maybe make it clear how we can work around that or with that. I don't know. Zoom. Yeah, a bot. Zoom thing could happen. I mean, it really could. A Zoom, it it could happen. Just you don't have to come in body, but you can come online and you know kids love screens, so unfortunately, so they'll probably like watching you. It well, might be nice to, oh. oh, sorry, go ahead. No, sorry, I was just gonna say, it might be nice to add something too about um, preferred language in the number two, the communication, um, something about, you know, what language you prefer as far as communications go. Excellent. I was just going to say, if we're looking for um, family or parental involvement in classrooms, I think we want to make sure that it's accessible to everyone because not everyone can like do a Zoom in the middle of the day with their kids <clears throat> class. So maybe there's other options as well to bring that in if you can't come in person. Sure. Because of COVID. Yep, that makes sense. All really great ideas. This is why we brought it to the group because you guys will all have a, a lovely different perspective than Donna and I do as we're sitting down thinking about what we'd like to hear about from our families. It's also really important to know what you want us to know about your families, your children and your priorities. Um, is there anything else around the survey that we anyone wants to share before we move on to the next part? I just wanted to say, I think it's important that we get these questions out to families because it's been a frustration of mine personally not to be able to actually meet people. This is very odd and very creepy kind of that I'm out in the middle of the street with people who I don't know and just my pitiful stop sign and I'm getting to know them because I'm asking them to move their car up, you know, and I, I want to know them better and I want them to know that we really do want to know them even though things are so wacky. And we will, I think, have to make a new video for incoming kids for next year. And it's great if we hear, um, if we hear different perspectives and ideas rather than what we, what we did because we loved our video that we made. Um, I've had students come up to me and say, I know you, you were in that video. 
I said, yes, yes, I was. But um, I think it would be fun and more authentic to have even the new parents, even though it's so early, start to participate with us. Okay. Um, and Trinity, there's two comments in the chat, one from Fatuma asking if this survey was gonna be translated into different language. Yes. Languages. And then Shay asked, um, maybe adding a question about ways you'd like Marcy to connect to community opportunities. Great. Thank you so much. So I think we added a couple people since we started. So Shay, wave your hand. There's Shay. Do you want to say, introduce yourself? Just say who's who goes to school here from your family? Oh, sure. Um, Shay, she, her, hers. Um, I'm a parent of Jalen Bailey. Um, he's in the fifth grade, and uh, Jordan Bailey is now not there anymore, but have been there since first grade. Yeah. And then Leo, did you, did you, yeah, Leo's mom. Did you? Uh, yeah, I accidentally changed it to Leo for an appointment for him, and I haven't been able to figure out how to fix it. But um, I, yeah, I'm Laura, and my son Leo is in kindergarten this year. <laughs> Great, thank you. I think we got everybody now. Great. Oh wait, yeah, we did. Okay. Um. So Talia, we have a few minutes um, before. Usually at our site council meetings, we go over businessy stuff that we need to take care of just because of our state requirements. And then we give a report of what's going on in the school, telling everybody know, you know what's been happening around in the last month. And sometimes we even have time for families to ask questions, which is really lovely. Um, but Talia, would you share a little bit about your group and your goals and, and how you could use some support? Yeah, thank you. Um, hello. So yes, my name is Talia. Um, and I think there may be one other person here who I think was on our email thread. I think Claire is also um, was part of the just the kind of group of us that came together to talk about parent pickup and drop off. Um, and I know that Phil um, Cross started off this conversation on the Marcy um, parent page just about um, how we can help, how parents can help with kind of the, 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 the situation happening at parent pickup and drop off, because we know that um, all the staff, you know, have have the responsibilities that they have. Um, and it, it, it again, it has obviously gotten a lot better from that first week of school. Like, very much, but I still think that if you all needed help, we, we're here to help. And I think we have some ideas just around things that might take some time, like city type of engagement, things like where the buses could drop off or you know, things that might take a long amount of time or committees or contacting people. But then also we're just curious about how we can help like if kids are getting dropped off early and like, can we set up parent volunteers to be able to stand outside and just kind of be there so that if kids are there, you know, waiting outside and, you know, it's going to be winter and there are going to be kids there a little early, you know, or um, about like uh, um, carpooling or ways to connect families so that if people need rides or um, things like that, because obviously transportation is very different. You guys have so many buses. It looked like you have like 16 buses or something like that, um, which is insane. And then you're also, you know, they ask people not to, to take the buses. So then you have all these cars, cars clogging things up. So obviously we all know, we all know that it, it was, it was pretty crazy. Um, so hello, <laughs> that's, that's it. I don't know. I guess we don't exactly know where to start. I think we, we, a couple of us met um, on Saturday and like walked around Marcy and Phil made a really beautiful like handout that he printed out, um, which I, I don't have right now to pull up. Um, but I guess a couple questions is if anyone has any ideas of who could maybe we could contact at the school who has, and you don't have to answer this now, but if we had someone at the school that could be a con like our connection to the school. And then also if there's I'm assuming this is not the first time that it's come up that maybe like there should be a different street for those buses to drop off on or something like that. Like people, a couple of people have had ideas like what would it take to, to block off a lane of traffic for the buses on fourth for just like 15 minutes or 20 minutes when the buses come by rather than, than come that way because it would be kind of a safer way for kids to get off 
I don't know. So any ideas of people to connect with, a person that we could have uh, to connect with via staff at the school? Eh, we're just looking to like help you out with the situation. Please let us help you. <laughs> That's kind of what, well, I really have a wrap. Yeah, I appreciate the offer. Phil walks by me every day shaking his head. So <laughs> and and a lot of people have been making fun of me, which I, of course I enjoy. But um it is very it has calmed down a lot, but there are still some big holes in the safety of what's going on outside. We we're getting to know the kids more and more every day, which is huge because for those of you who are new, we had the same kids forever, like for all eight years in the school. So this year with half of the kids being new, we don't know who they're really supposed to go with. And my very first plan as having them having the cars line up was a disaster, disaster, because I was going to have the kids wait inside, but eventually we're going to have to make the kids wait inside. So I would happily be the point person, Talia, and we can have a little meeting and talk about it. And I'm going to make Sydney help me. Did she leave? Good. No, I'm just kidding. She's like, <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, that I think that's where we should start because okay. I don't have a good. I'm not very good with my stop sign, really. I, you know, the kids are calling that my second job now with holding the stop sign, but I kind of fluke around with it, so I can't talk during my job. But I'm happy to meet with you guys at another time and we can just brainstorm because that's the problem. We didn't anticipate the number of bus routes that are getting canceled all the time. And so that's impacted our student numbers because we've had families who were new to Marcy just drop out because they're like, I, I can't get a a text in the middle of the day saying I have to come and pick up my kid. I live in South Minneapolis because now our school is a whole district magnet. So we get kids from all over. And um, the other thing that was tricky, not only that, there was something else. Oh yeah, we didn't realize that we were going to have 200 kids get picked up a day on our little street. For those of you who are, no, are new, I have always advocated tearing any building down to give us a parking lot because we have no parking lot at Marcy. And I think that that becomes a safety issue as well. So everyone has settled down and I feel better about knowing, knowing where the kids are going. But a parent asked me one day, just, so how do you know that child's supposed to go with that person? And that's the scary thing. We hang on to them for dear life, but typically the child will run to the parent or the auntie or the grandma or whoever's picking them up. And then we, we do it that way, but we don't have a hard and fast system of releasing students. And we really do need to work on that before it's winter. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. So would you like me to email you? Yeah. Like, okay. Yep. Perfect. Email me and we'll set up a time. And if you are hearing any other parents that are interested in this too, you can have, you can connect them to me and, or to Phil or also. My, my favorite is that I have parents who live in this neighborhood whose kids are now in college. And this one lady was walking by me. She just burst out laughing. And I said, what? She goes, you've been doing this job a long time to have been advanced to the, the safety patrol lady. And I'm just like, quit laughing at me because it wasn't funny to me. <laughs> oh, and it's a nice way, like you said, it's a nice way to get to know people because people aren't coming in. So that makes sense. But also like yeah. we could hold your stop sign. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just telling you like there are big people stop that you guys. I and hold it's a nice. big stop sign. So, yeah, well, and it's nice to involve done. families and parents too, to get to know kids. It's nice. That's a good yeah, thing. Okay, cool. So Thank I you. have a question. Could um is this something Chaz could work on too or not? Trinity. We can invite him to the meeting. He might be good. He's our safety and security guy whose district, like when Minneapolis decided not to engage in a contract with the real police anymore, we have safety and security guys and Chance is ours, this guy named Chance. And so he could, yeah, that's another guy. We can invite him to the meeting. Yeah. He got us some cones and those cool vests for the people that want to wear them. And my stop and, sign got me my stop sign. And we, 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 got, also, we have some flags. 
some safety flags that we haven't quite used yet because you know Donna is always on the parent pickup side and I'm always by the buses making sure they all arrive and they leave um, at the appropriate time make sure all the students and staff have brought their kids out before we dismiss the buses because um, you know that gets tricky sometimes but um, yeah chance can help we have different different ideas and previously we did have the buses, some buses, pick up the kids at dismissal on 4th Street, right? We had our special needs buses there, which sounds even scarier than having the general ed buses there, but our special needs kids are often walked holding the staff member's hand to the bus. So we wanted those little buses to get in and out but now that they fixed fourth and have that parking lane and stuff, it just seems even busier than ever, but it's all up for discussion. We only have so much space around our building and you know, we, we, we made up what we have. So I bet other ideas might even be more helpful. Great. Has anybody has ever asked the city if they could make it a one way, just that block? Right, so that's why we're I, we're on, we're gonna we're going for this we're going for this we're gonna go for figuring out who we have to talk and I know it's election time and there's a lot of really important stuff happening with the election as well but like we're gonna we're gonna that's where we're going with it is to figure we, out how we, we can make it we have asked for it before but that was I don't know eight years ago or something and there's new people in power so yeah and I know Talia as well we have been asking even for no parking signs on the bus lane because the no parking signs for dirt certain times of day they don't go around where all of our buses are so that's caused a lot of really tricky traffic jams for a while so uh, i appreciate uh, you guys getting this going and i appreciate you also putting your email in the chat so anyone that needs to contact or has ideas please connect with Talia, that would be super great. Um, we have about 15 minutes left. So I'm gonna turn it over to Donna. Um, she's gonna share a little bit about what's been going on at the start of the school year. We, we know some of our major challenges, but we've also had some really great things going on. So I'll be quiet, go ahead, Donna. So this is called the principal's report. Usually I just tell the truth. So sometimes I think I'm surprised I still have a job because I always tell you guys the truth. If things are going well in the district or if things are challenging for our school in the district, I feel like it's my responsibility to include parents in the conversations, not because I want you to go down to the school board and you know bring sticks and yell and scream. That doesn't usually work, especially these days with our most recent superintendent. He's very, he likes his ducks in a row and you report to the people that, that you're supposed to report to. So it's not quite as chatty as I like it to be at the district level with principals and administrators up there. But um, this is where I just talk about things that might be of issue to you. Um, I have been a squeaky wheel as far as our school is concerned because since the beginning of the year, we've had to lose 3.5 teachers. And I've never had to lose a teacher in my life. And when the reason you lose a teacher is because you don't have enough students in the classroom. And so um, we, my commitment was to make the cuts as um, not touch the kids as much as possible. And so we were able to kind of do that, but in the first couple of weeks, What's happened in the district, you know, because we have the CDD that was throwing everybody's place in life up in the air. And a lot of kids were going to new schools and a lot of kids, families didn't know that they were coming to Marcy because they thought that if they didn't sign up for anything, they'd still be going to their home school that they went to last year. But it was a big confusion for a lot of families. We, um, we were scheduled to have about 625 kids and we're at about 525 kids. And the reason we are is multi, there's multi-faceted reasons, 
but we have um, our busing has been an issue. Like I said, parents think that the school is really far away from home for their kids and they didn't necessarily choose it. Many did, but some didn't. And then they're the ones that just decide to stay in their home school because they can't drive this far if their child doesn't have a bus. So transportation has been a challenge. And then um, that's kind of been our biggest challenge, except that when the district people came and said, you're gonna be a arts magnet, Donna, they said, we're gonna expand your grade levels by one classroom teacher each. So now we have four for kindergarten, four first, four second, all the way up. And I said, why don't we just leave it at three, which is what we usually had because will grow into ourselves. We don't know. I wanted to be more conservative and they're like, no, 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 it's gonna be fine. Uh, even if you work at, even if your building is at 80% capacity, it'll be fine because we wanna really build this arts magnet up. Okay, okay, okay. So I believe that. And then really because of the pandemic, the district opened an online school and the, population exploded in the online school. More and more parents were choosing to put their kids in the online school. And then there were all a lot of rules about that. Like if you decided to go to online school, you couldn't come back to Marcy. So your parent, you had to either, you had to decide. And there were a lot of parents who weren't ready to decide about how COVID might affect their kids. And so we lost parent, uh, families that way. Many children opted to go online or families opted to put their kids online. And so we lost more kids that way. So the first two teachers we had to cut were intervention people, people who would like maybe pull uh, small groups of students who needed extra help out of the classroom. You know, they weren't classroom teachers. And I had to send them to the online school. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm, I'm kind of like a family person. I'm very much like you guys are my family. This school is my family. This is where I live and I care about everybody. And I try to do that with our staff members as well, that we are a community and a family. And honestly, I have some of the best teachers I've ever had in the district. Uh, we have the a terrific staff and they don't leave us. So I think it works for us to make sure that people know they're valued and cared about and everything. So it about killed me to have to cut people that I wooed to get, you know, we wooed them to get here. And then I say, oh, by the way, you're gonna go on an online school. And the only good thing was they didn't lose their job. They just had to go somewhere else. And then we didn't get receive as many students who need ELL services as we thought we would, as we were projected. So I had to release one of our very competent, very kind ELL teachers. And so that's been tough, really tough. Um, the students are not affected, but the principals are affected and, and the colleagues are affected. And you know, we've never been in a school situation where we've had a worry that we might lose a teacher here or there. And that's a very icky feeling to have. I think that I'm knocking on wood right now that I think we're done with cuts. I think the district is settling into their, their lives now, but um, we continue to get new students. Our class sizes are small right now. They're delightful for the teachers. Trust me, they're like, you know, 21, 22 kids in their room. So I expect all of your children will be geniuses by the end of the year because they'll have gotten so much attention. And not that they're not geniuses now, trust me, I know. But um, I think that that'll make it a little tricky because when you continually get new students, the teachers are always having to welcome somebody in and teach them the rules and blah, blah, blah. And the class dynamics shift a little depending on who the kids are. So that's the kind of year I'm anticipating that will probably continue to grow a little bit. But honestly, the best thing that's been happening is our arts integration. So we had the opportunity to work with our arts person, Hannah Edwards. She's our district program facilitator kind of person. She's, she oversees all the art stuff that's gonna happen. And I had to learn right along with everybody else because I am not of the artist brain direction, not usually. And so I would ask the hard questions and Trinity 
used to be an art teacher. So she was a ringer. So they're all the artsy people are all involved. And we had to make decisions about what your kids were gonna experience as an arts magnet. And because we had a year to plan it, it's going great. The fifth graders created artwork and then talked about it as an as an as their ability to they had to express how they felt about what they created and they're excellent um there has been there have been three or four rotations of arts integration where a specialist works with your child's teacher together and they they do something artistic around the classroom uh um standards so once you get in here to see what's going on you're going to be shocked and the kids I, they're already figuring out how to make videos of a lot of the stuff that the kids are doing just so you can see because it's unfortunate that i mean marcy's always been a school where the kids love to perform they're all performing performing they love that stuff i i I've met a few shy kids at Marcy, but by fifth or sixth grade, they're not shy anymore. They're ready to tap dance on the big stage. So I think that you would be happy and you should ask your kids about that, about how it's going in the arts, because that is really, really um, going well. And as a community, for those of you who are new, parents are a big part of our community. And we want as many of you to participate as possible any which way you can. I'm staring at Shay right now because years ago, I, before her kids were, I, probably before they were born, maybe you and your husband taught spoken word to the middle school kids. Yeah, as, for like seven years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they who knew our kids would end up going to Marcy? It's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, but it's been amazing. And it's been amazing to have you come in and teach something that the kids found so relevant because the emotions and hormones of the middle school age child scream spoken word. And so it was really, it was a miracle. And so this community has often suggested residencies or people that might be good to come in and work under, under the umbrella of peace and social justice and how we fit that into the arts. So your child is getting a great education. When you walk around the building, it's happy, it's um, vibrant as usual, and the kids are doing a good job. The new kids look a little, you know, I can't say that everybody's happy to be here. Some kids are mourning the loss of the school that they went to for several years of their lives but we're trying to get them all to be a community. But again, we can't have them all in the theater or the auditorium. So it's a tricky thing, but that's my report and I'm sticking to it. I won't talk about any other things that are negative because honestly, we talked about transportation and we talked about the front of the building and otherwise your kids are here and they're doing fine. So that's it, any questions? I have a um, kind of unrelated question, but sure. it can be answered for sure. I want them answered outside of here if people don't mind doing so. And um, it was more so in regards to um, Ms. Donna and the rest of the staff, if anyone wanted to share um, via email or just statements how they felt about the CDD. And then if there were any parents who um, wanted to share like their opinions in writing anonymous, anonymously or known about the CDD and how it affects them and their kids at Marcy by any chance. And um, if they wanted to share that, uh, it doesn't have to be immediately, but maybe over the course of like this, this month until maybe even the holidays, because it'll give the liberty to, to maybe write something up or really see a larger impact and uh, maybe either sharing that via email if they want to send it directly to me or to the to the staff members and I collect it from them. If people are willing to do that, if that's uncomfortable and any opinion, however you feel, I just want to be more um, open to them. And um, um, I, I will be, um, would like to use them if, they, if I'm allowed to share them 
um, for my potential agenda um, in reference to sharing how the CDC affects and potentially uh, what other options we could have in not having it just so restrictive. So if people are open to that, um, I would love that support. So I love that you're here and you're saying that because that has been a legacy for Marcy families forever. Gaining support to be able to use your voice at a higher level or for the school's good or for the student's good. So thank you for sharing that. No will, you, will you put your, if you're able to, can you put your email in the chat? So anybody that wants to send you their thoughts and opinions, they have a, an avenue to do that easily. Yes. I am so impressed with us, you guys. We are right on time. We are right on time. It's a miracle. It's a Christmas miracle. It's not Christmas, <laughs> but it's a miracle. Um, so we, I'm going to turn it over. Donna and I are, are done with our site council. The way we're doing it this year, we're doing site council for an hour from six to seven, and then we're turning it over to family connections and they'll be meeting from seven to eight. And it's really our parent group um, and they're amazing and wonderful human beings. And we'll be, I'll be sticking around. Um, I'm sure Donna will be too, because we're part of the group too. So. Yeah. Trina is actually a real parent of the group and they're all mine. So I like to hear what you guys have to say. And if you're new, always feel free that, to call Trinity or I and ask us anything about anything that's going on. Any questions? I know that those darn pandemic letters are confusing at best and we're seeing people having to quarantine left and right and we're all trying to pretend like it's not that big a deal but we realize it's a very big deal to you and your families if you have to stay home with your child when they have been exposed to somebody we're very careful i mean i i try to defend my school nurse all the time because kathleen is an excellent school nurse but it is very um challenging to be the bearer of the news that oh by the way your kid has to stay home for 10 days so thank you all do we stay right on this yep we're just gonna go with this <clears throat> should i put on different glasses or something <laughs> yeah could you make some sort of like theatrical change so that we can yeah i will awesome okay um so transitioning to family connections or parent council if you've um, been involved in the past I'm gonna put, well, I'll just put in the agenda, our, in the chat, our agenda for today. Um, and you can see that we, um, so, so the first hour that we just did was site council, which is separate um, from parent council or family connections. So now family connections is, again, for all family members, community members, um, anybody who wants to have a, a part in building Marcy community. And I put in the um, agenda here, kind of like an overview of, of what Family Connections is. Um, so we join together parents, families, community members in doing a variety of things and they can kind of be grouped into um, community building events, parent forums and educational um, opportunities for, for the community planning social events and programs, and then organizing fundraising activities. And the um, fundraising activities are, are money that then goes to the Family Connections budget to support students, staff, teachers at Marcy. Um, and I, so, and I'm Kate again, and I'm currently, I'm a holdover um, chair of the Family Connections. I was chair last year and the year before, and then we are, if you see in the agenda there, we're actually, um, because COVID was a crazy um, disruption to our year last year, we are going to be looking for all new officer positions for family council. So the way that family connections works is um, everybody here and everybody that wants to attend is part of family connections or part of parent council. Um, you all have a, a vote in any decisions that are being made. Um, then kind of like the leadership and the day-to-day -day drive of the work is um, directed by four officer positions. So that's a chair, a vice chair, a secretary, and a treasurer. Um, and we are going to be needing all new folks in those positions this year because either 
um, the people that have had them in the past are um, no longer parents at the school because they either graduated out of K-5 or are at a different school um, or have served a two-year term and are um, looking for someone to replace them now. Um, so we have four officer positions that kind of guide and direct the work and make sure things happen. And then a group of what's called parent representatives, um, which is you kind of think of it as like a board of directors for the organization. So a larger group of parents that commit to or family members that commit to attending as regularly as they can to monthly meetings and, and helping um, with the planning of events and whatnot. Um, and we currently have um, six parent reps and three of us are on this call right now. So myself, Claire and Mike are current um, parent reps and we are also looking to expand that group as well. Um, so that will happen later on. This is just a preview of what's to come and kind of a grounding in um, in what Family Connections is and, and what we're hoping to do this year. So any questions about how that's run? We meet monthly. Sadly, right now we meet via Zoom. Um, in the past, we've met in person in the library. Hopefully one day we can do that again. Um, but for now, we'll make do with, with virtual meetings. And I do see that we have some new people joining, which is fantastic. So maybe um, maybe we can take a short interlude here and do a, a, a new round of introductions just so that our new um, attendees can, can feel grounded in the space as well. So we can do it just like we did at the beginning of site council. Um, and I will start and I'll popcorn it to the next person. But if you wanna just let folks know your name and um, who you have at Marcy as a as a student that you're that you're representing right now. So, I'm Kate, and I have a kindergartner uh, and a third grader at Marcy, and I will popcorn it uh, to Mike. Hi, I'm still Mike. Um, I have a second grader, um, Emmett, and yeah, it's it's he's kind of new to Marcy, but kind of not. He uh, did distance learning last year, and this year is his first year in the building. Um, I'll pass it to Sonia. Hi, I'm Sonia. Um, I have a kindergartner who is a Marcy student, but who um, is disabled and receiving instruction at home right now because of some disability related medical stuff but will hopefully be um, at some point back uh, in person. And, um, oh, his name's Foxy. And I will popcorn to Trinity. Hi everybody, I'm Trinity. I'm the assistant principal at Marcy. This is my fifth year at Marcy. I love this community. Both of my children attend school here. I have a second grader, her name's Solde, and a fourth grader, his name's Callan, and they also love their Marcy community, which is great, knowing that they're happy coming to school. I will popcorn to Anissa. Hello, everyone. I'm Anissa Parks, and I have a fifth grader whose name is Nat, and I will popcorn to, to Parker, given my last name. Hi, um, I am not Parker, I'm Parker's mom. Um, this is Parker's Zoom for immediate access, sorry. Um, my name is Shante, but people do, kids call me Parker's mom. And Parker's in second grade and it's his third year with Marcy. And I will pop corn to Leo, mom. I know it's not Leo. Hi, I'm, I'm Laura and uh, my son Leo is in kindergarten this year. Um, I'll popcorn to Claire. Hi, my name is Claire. I use she, her pronouns. I have a first, yes, first grader at Marcy. Their name is Harriet. Um, and um, I am a parent rep. I am also the spouse of one of the music teachers at Marcy, Andrew. And I will popcorn it over to Taylor. Hi, my name is Taylor and I have a kindergartner at Marcy. 
this year. And I will popcorn to Emmy. Hi, I'm Emmy. I use she, her pronouns. I also have a kindergartner. Her name is Leora and she is in Ms. Leah's class. And I will popcorn to Susanna. Hi, my name is Susana, and I am the bilingual program assistant. And this year, um, Marcy, and my job is helping our Spanish speaker families to get connected to our Marcy families. And I'm happy to be here. Um, Abraham, no, you went. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot to popcorn. <laughs> okay, I will popcorn to, let me see who's not doing it yet. Uh, let me pop up to Donna. Hi, my name's Donna Andrews. I'm the principal here at Marcy. I've been here for 16 lovely years. And um, my kids are too old to talk about, so, but I do have three of them. And uh, let's see, I will popcorn to Olson's. Hello. Hi there. Hello. Olson's, Ryan and Carrie, and our children are. Wyatt and Walter in third grade and a kindergartner respectively. And let's see who we could pass to here. Um, Sydney. Hi everybody. Um, I'm sorry, I'm in a really echoey space. Um, I am the family and community liaison. I've been there as long as Donna. Um, both of my kids went all the way through kindergarten through eighth. Uh, it's great to see so many new faces and um, old faces. <laughs> um, and I will popcorn to Bashir or Kate. Did you already go, Kate? I did. Shay, do you want to go? Uh, sure. I'm, um, hi, I'm Shay. She, her, hers. Um, I have, my son is in the fifth grade there. His name's Jalen. And uh, yeah, I have about a 15 year history with Marcy um, as an artist educator um, and now a, a parent. So it's, um, I'm always, I always feel horrible that I can't make any of the meetings um, as I travel around a bit, but um, I'm hoping because of COVID and the Zoom possibilities that I can actually be more connected this year. I will popcorn to Fatuma. Fatuma, are you there? Yes, sorry. Uh, my name is Fatuma and I have uh, kindergarten, second grade and third grade. I will, who didn't go, sorry. Anissa, she went. Has everyone gone? Sonia. <laughs> Whoever hasn't gone, go. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. I think that's everyone. Um. Thanks, you all. Lovely to see everybody on the screen. Thank you all for coming and agreed, Shay, that I think even when we can be back together in person, we probably should keep a virtual option as well so that we can have a, a hybrid um, for folks that can just jump on via Zoom. It's pretty fantastic not to have to drive and park and all that stuff. So agreed. Um, so if you take a look at the agenda, the next um, the next thing up is to talk briefly about our budget. So Family Connections slash Parent Council um, is its own nonprofit organization. So we have a budget each year that we need to set um, that kind of guides um, what we'll be 
spending money on every year, um, what we hope to raise in terms of funds to support those projects. So um, I put the proposed budget in the agenda, but I'll also put it in the um, in the chat. And I'm sorry if I am flailing a little bit, but I'm gonna, there we go. Um, so, so this is the proposed budget and the way that the budget is created every year is just by um, taking a look at last year's budget and um, kind of doing a best guess at how things went last year, how we think things are gonna go this year, what we ended up spending money on, what we didn't spend money on, that kind of thing. Um, this year's budget looks a little different than other years budget. Uh, as you can probably imagine, last year looked very different than years in the past. Um, we were not able to have any in-person events or fundraisers because of COVID. Um, so a lot of our, the revenue that we had generated in the past didn't happen last year. Some of the big events that we have done in the past to raise money and to build community didn't happen. Um, and if we have time, we're gonna have uh, Sydney ground us in some of those things that we have done in the past, such as, um, uh, something called Fall Fun Fest, which was a uh, activity that probably would have taken place now or already, so, you know, at the beginning of the year. Um, a, a big plant sale that used to happen in the spring, magazine sales, that kind of thing. So some of those big um, fundraising events did not happen last year. Um, and depending on how COVID goes, may or may not happen this year. Um, so we're kind of in a strange limbo um world where we're not sure how things are going to look um as you might expect some of the anticipated expenses that we've had in years past did not happen last year either since we didn't have a lot of um you know outdoor or uh, outside folks coming into the school or some of the like trips that might have happened in the past where students and staff are going out into the community those also didn't happen so this year's budget is significantly kind of smaller um, than in past years. And you will see here, while we have kind of an estimated income for, well, a, let's say a hopeful income of around like $11,000. If we, um, even with kind of trimming down some of the expenses that we've had in years past, we're still, we're still gonna spend, we're still ending up spending more money than we're bringing in, um, which is not something we wanna do every year, not something, that we like to see in a budget, but is fairly unusual in terms of um, having a year where we aren't able to generate a lot of income, again, primarily because we can't do things in person, which makes it hard <laughs> to have fundraisers. But we're still gonna try our best. Um, so please feel free to jump in and ask questions, but um, I'm just gonna do a really quick walkthrough because um, we do want to try to approve this budget by the end of the meeting so that we can start making decisions that require expenditures and or start planning some of um, these events that will bring in cash. So you can see on the top, the income, um, I'm just gonna quickly go through annual fund is like the ask that we do to families and community members to just simply donate online to us every year. It's just usually a, a letter that goes out to, to parents and families. Um, corporate donations as any um, folks that donate you know, via workplace giving. Um, Wolfridge we'll talk about later. It's a separate kind of line item here, but um, if you have a child who is older in the school, you'll know that it's the fifth grade, right? Fifth grade students have traditionally taken a trip to Wolfridge, which is a um, in like an ecological environmental center up uh, up north. Um, so there's considerable expense associated with that. Um, Magazine sale was something that did not happen last year, but as you can imagine, it was a magazine fundraiser. A plant sale in the spring, again, didn't happen last year, but when it does happen, it's a pretty big fundraiser. It takes a lot of effort, but it brings in a lot of money, which is lovely and people love it. Um, promotional give backs, box tops, Amazon Smile, those are all like um, small fundraisers that we can do in partnership with other um, organizations like when you click Amazon, the the you can click what nonprofit you wanna give. It's like point something of your um, expense that you, when you purchase something on Amazon. Um, box tops are like the cereal box tops that you can save and send in to generate funds for your school. Um, 
Chipotle fundraisers, like when you go to Chipotle and a certain night and a certain percentage of your funding of your purchase goes to the school. Peace necklaces and yard signs are like items that we've sold in the past to raise funds. And then interest income is just um, any interest on the money that we currently have in the bank that's producing funds for us. So those are the a brief rundown of the income and then expenses below. Um, special requests is a amount of money that we like to have available every year for teachers and staff at Marcy to be able to request um, a, an amount of money to do some sort of special project either in the school or with their classroom um, or to purchase um, some item that's maybe not in the budget for the school. Um, so like uh, an example is last year, uh, the special education teachers bought a bunch of um, materials for the uh, special ed classroom and for the hallways to, um, to improve their, their offerings that they weren't otherwise able to purchase. So it's, it's um, request, specific requests for items from teachers. Classroom funds are um, a dollar amount per student um, that then those funds are made available to the teachers to purchase um, items for their classroom. Um, media center in the library that is um, that's going to be funded specifically if you see on the agenda there's uh, something at the very bottom where it says an upcoming event is the online scholastic book fair. So that is if you've ever done or remember from your youth a scholastic book fair where you can go online and buy books for your kids and then the um, school will get a certain percentage of, of those sales and those those monies are then going directly to purchase new media and new books for the library. So those are, it's kind of a one on one to one there. Whatever is raised through the book sale then turns into books for, for the library. Um, teacher and staff support is like goodies and um, things to show teachers how great they are and support them with, you know, coffee and beverages and snacks um, to make their lives a little bit easier since they have to deal with our crazy children all day. Um, parent events, self-explanatory, any costs we have that are related to events that we might um, have. Principals fund, that's for um, spending for Don and Trinity, um, for, for the items that they would like to, to purchase for the school. Community services, um, maybe something we'll be able to do pending COVID. So um, partnerships with nonprofits or with the community that students can participate in. Art Adventure is a wonderful program that brings in volunteers right now virtually to the school, partnering with, I think it's the Institute of Art right now, um, to do additional art education on a volunteer basis with parents usually. Um, yep, Sydney's giving me the heads up. Office supplies, volunteer appreciation gifts, fee and um, related fees. So that was a very quick rundown of the budget, I understand. Does anybody have questions or anything to add to, to right now? And I know that this isn't the most exciting thing to start off our first meeting with, but it is essential so that we can start spending money and making money. <laughs> Abra, I see you have your hand up. Yes, so I apologize. This is very much like our left field at this point since school just started, but also we're about to have an election and one of the fundraisers that's been pretty successful in the past for us has been a bake sale on election day. So basically you have parents donate baked goods and then you sell them on election day to everyone who's coming to your school to vote. So you are tapping a different community than your normal fundraising efforts. And it could be COVID safe if you like baggy things up and have it outdoors that people can purchase something going through the doors. Just a suggestion because we're like coming up on that time if we wanted to consider it it might raise some money but you know it's short it's a short time frame so yeah thoughts i love the idea um i i think that we have lots of people who come here to vote so what and a nice nice thing audience the we really spoke. nice thing is that you're getting a different audience than you are for all of your under, other fundraising. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess COVID might put a damper on it, sort of, but. If it's know. outdoors and you 
pre bag things and just say like five bucks, small bag, 10 bucks, big bag, all proceeds go to the school. I think it could be done, but again, we're short time span and this is a whole new thing. So we have, so when we taught French here, we sold crits to people who came to the theater to see the plays. That was good. Food is always good. It's a good one. Parker's mom, do you have your hand up, I think, virtually. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, I don't know all of the ins and outs, but I wanted to possibly suggest, and again, I can email um, just like the mock-up or the idea, but back when I went to Marcy, we did business days, and I know we're K through five. Um, I know it was something it, that generates money for the kids and the school, and I know it costs money to make money, so um, potentially sponsoring a small amount of that and doing a junior business days for the kids, but they would be selling online products um, and then seeing how we can work proceeds into that. Um, I have some ideas. Um, I think it'll be more so about just seeing who wants to hear more about it and submitting it and then ironing out the kinks because it would be like a test room. I can testify that my fifth grader loves to make money. And if he got to work at making money for his school, he would probably be really into that. <laughs> I would have to tell him that he wasn't keeping it first. <laughs> well, so they would, in theory, whatever profits the kids make, they would, it's um, when I, when we used to do it, we paid an entry fee and the entry fees. And then um, like um, if, it, if we did junior business days online, it would be the kids um, maybe having like a donation box or, or like an added fee and everyone's adding COVID fees to everything, but like an added fee to your purchase or something like that to support, um, but an additional donation box. Um, or if they didn't keep their proceeds, again, if it's a test run, that's fine too. We kept our profits um, and we had, we were in charge of, um, purchasing all the supplies if we wanted to do our own product. Um, my boy is really into his own business. And um, I just, I look forward to him going to Marcy just because I wanted him to experience business days. And I didn't know I was that old and they didn't do that anymore. So anyhow, I also I, don't know how to take the hand down. Yeah, oh, I mind. love all of these ideas. And I, one thing that we, um, that I had put on the, on the agenda was, discussing the possibility of having a, a fundraising committee, like a subcommittee of, of family connections, um, just to do this, to talk about what are some other or new ways that we could try to generate funds or what are some great fundraising activities. And I think typically we don't necessarily have time during these meetings to like get into a really robust discussion about that. So creating a, a, a group of folks that might be willing to meet once a month outside of these meetings, I think would be fantastic if there's interest and then we could really start planning out and really get the ball rolling on some of these possible other um, fundraising activities if there was if there's interest from folks. Um, and I, I would be happy to coordinate people connecting with one another if that's something that any of you are interested in. Um, if you wanna put your interest and and your and the best way to get in contact with you in the chat um we could also publicize it you know more widely to, to folks that aren't here today um and then try to find a time that would work for people because i think these are all i love all of these ideas um yeah perfect i see people already putting their email in there Okay, so if you're interested, please put your put your contact info in there and then I will follow up by connecting everybody after this meeting. Um, any so, other? Sorry, I just I just wanted to ask, um, uh, is it Abra or Abra? Abra, thanks. Abra, so have you done that before at a school? Um, yes, I have. We, we, we've done that at um, our previous school. We did that. It was a it was a success. But, you know, people were also able to see and touch the cookies, which, you know, right now would have to come up with a COVID safe way to do it. 
So yeah, right I'm now, willing to coordinate. Our um, our election will happen in the gym, if I'm correct. So it could be possibly something in the back, tiny little parking lot area. I, yes, I would. Ex I would think that doing this on a table outside would probably be the most COVID safe way to do it, so that people can approach outdoors. Hopefully, we get some parent volunteers as well as whatever um, bake sale goods, and then just. You know, we just see a table and a sign saying, you know, buy some cookies. It all goes to the kids. So would it be homemade stuff or would it be? The idea would lot? be, well, I mean, if we could get any stores to donate things, that would be fantastic. I do not have those connections, but if anyone else does and they would like to share them with me, that would be awesome. Or we could call local stores. I'd be willing to do that. But um, in general, the idea would be to ask parents, can you donate, you know, two dozen cookies? That would be awesome. And then we take the donations. We, for COVID reasons, probably put them in bags and price them to sell to voters. That would be the general idea. And then get parents or staff or whoever to volunteer to staff the table. I mean, if it's done under parent counsel or family connections and not through the school, because we can't do that through the school, but we could certainly have it happen outside in the park, right? Exactly. The idea we have it somewhere, somewhere on coffee. the flow of traffic, with perhaps signs right. and etc. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Donna? Well, I could certainly help with that, but um, you know, I, I guess we, we need to. I like the this. idea of coffee too, because that's what those people want in those lines. Coffee. That yeah, they're standing true. in line. It's cold sometimes. Could you print Hot off chocolate. any of the kids? Could you print off any of the kids' artwork that they've been working on onto sticker sheets and throw those on the plastic bags for a point of interest to get people's yeah. attention? Adorable. Yeah, cool idea. Yeah. Great idea. Abra, are you willing to help figure this out? Yes, with the qualification that I'm a new parent to the school, so I don't know anybody or anything, but I can come up with some graphics and I can like try and connect and try and get parents to donate and everything. But again, new to the school, don't know anybody. No, that's totally great. Um, I love new ideas and new faces and I love this idea. And since it's a short time frame, I think we should get moving on it. So. All right, yeah, so quick okay. question. Um, okay, so who do I need to email to get stuff into the newsletter going out to the parents? That would be Sydney, yes? Yep. Okay. Um, and if you want to email me about this too, uh, last year we had a really successful uh, making grilled cheese um, <laughs> fundraiser, which uh, I know people will buy this stuff. Sounds very similar, yeah. Uh, is is there anybody who is currently, who is currently coordinating like the Chipotle and their restaurant gives? Who's talking to restaurants right now? Kate. Yeah, that's me. So if you want okay. to email or put your email in. Kate, if you can put your email in the chat, then I'll Beautiful. connect Kate and Sydney and we'll talk about stuff and get this sorted out. Awesome. Genius. Love all of this energy. Thank you, folks. Um, okay, back to budget. Are there any questions or comments people have? And if not, I'm gonna do a request to have somebody motion to pass this budget so that we can move forward with our agenda. Motion to pass the budget as written. Does anyone I, second? I second. All in favor can say aye or raise their little hand on the thing. <laughs> Any opposed? Awesome. Motion passes. Thank you all. Like I said, I know starting out with passing a budget is not the most exciting, thrilling way to start parent council, but very critical and appreciated. Um, so the next thing on the agenda is another one of those, uh, not super exciting things, but so, um, 
the board is uh, run by what's called bylaws, which is kind of our like um, the rules that govern how we do our business of, of Family Connections Parent Council. So again, there um, Trinity had linked to this earlier during site council, but there's also uh, a link that I put in there that I will share again in the chat. Um, that because we are a, a, a new school name right now, um, we I, I think it's prudent that we make some updates to our bylaws. So there's three changes that I am hoping folks will be um, open to making, and that is so there's the there's the sheet that has the bylaws as they currently are, and then some suggestions on the side, which are in the form of comments. Um, so I am proposing that we change everywhere that says Marcy Open School to Marcy School for the Arts and change language in the very last, there's one, oh, the second to last page, the bottom of page three um, has his, her language and I'm proposing that we change it to there. And then adding a section uh, in article five at the end to accommodate holding online meetings basically. So due to COVID being able to have more flexibility in how um, parent council meets and, and is able to connect. So Mike was able to provide us with um, this language about being able to use phone video or web conferencing to, ho to hold our monthly meetings um, while we can't have them in person. So. Those are the three changes that we are currently suggesting. This is basically a housekeeping thing to, to make them reflect our current school and our current reality, I guess you might say. Questions about that or comments? <laughs> is there anyone who would like to motion to pass um, the bylaws as amended? Motion to uh, make the three amended changes to the bylaws. Thank you, Claire. Anyone second? Second. Barbara, thank you. All in favor, raise your hand or say aye. And anyone opposed? Awesome. Thank you all. All right. So back to our agenda. Okay, so we have a couple more things that we're hoping to talk about. One is, um, I put this next because I didn't want to lose sight of it because it is important. So as I said at the beginning, um, I'm currently running this meeting as kind of the holdover chair from last year, but we are looking to um, have new folks step into the roles of chair, vice chair, secretary and treasurer. And so generally, um, I mean, I think most folks are familiar with kind of what those roles are, but the, the chair of, of, of Family Connections um, is kind of the person that prepares for the meetings, um, facilitates the meetings, connects with Sydney, Donna and Trinity to make sure that we're talking about the things that we need to be and, and best supporting the school, um, working with Sydney to get the word out about meetings, running the Zoom, that kind of thing. Um, the vice chair is a person that's there to, to support that and has in the past been kind of viewed as maybe someone who's interested in being chair in the future, but not necessarily, doesn't have to be, um, but kind of like a secondary support. Um, uh, secretary would take notes at the meetings, which I'm currently doing, but would love not to do as well. Um, and then the treasurer, our current treasurer is still a Marcy parent. Um, she is still a board, a, a parent rep, um, but she has been doing that role for many, many years and is fantastic at it, but would also love to not do it anymore. Um, so we are also looking to, to have someone fill that position. So I know that this is a very sudden first meeting thing that you, know, you may or may not be interested in, but at the moment, is there anybody who has questions or comments about those roles or has any interest in any of those roles, knowing that there would be lots of support for you from current members, Donna, Trinity, Sydney, I'm sure as well, um, if that's something you're interested in.
I'll leave it open for awkward silence for anybody who might have feelings about stepping into any of these roles. I'm very happy <clears throat> to do any position that needs to be filled and can be flexible with that if somebody wants to really do something or I will continue as a parent rep too. Oh, I should also say that we, we also um, can have more parent reps, which are like the board members. So if that's, that's something that someone is interested in, those are also open positions as well. So again, that would just be someone who is interested in consistently participating um, and would participate also in like two additional kind of board meetings a year to help guide and plan the, the work. Sure, I could totally be a parent rep. <laughs> That sounds that? Abra? Abra. Yes. You can add me to the parent rep list because I'm a parent. Am I a rep? <laughs> Love it. Anyone else have interest at this time in any of these positions? I I'd like to continue on right now as a parent rep. So, I'll be a parent rep. This is so just, nice. just to be clear, um, so previously I've been only involved in PTAs where um, the fulfilling of certain positions was a key um, thing for being able to continue in the future, but this is just a parent connections group, so it's not key, is that correct? It's just a like useful delineation of duties? In, in order to function, we do need someone in these roles. <laughs> but um, it's not like they're going to kill the whole group if we don't immediately figure this out. Sydney looks like it's, she has something. Yeah, sorry. It's a, it's actually a 501c3, so it does have to have an actual okay. board. Okay. And, and we do have three other individuals who are currently parent reps as well who are not here tonight. So there are some other folks that are also participating. So they're, what the, the folks right. here are and not everyone that so has been involved. Theoretically, in. their role is to go to the site council meetings. And if Donna was to do something on site council that required a vote, the reps would do that. Um, but the four positions, it's actually, is it really, it's three positions, three, at minimum positions that we need for the 501c3. And that's a chair, a treasurer, and a secretary. We can also have a vice chair if, if needed, but it's not mandatory. And Kate, you really, really, really don't want to be secretary anymore? Is that what I'm getting from you? Um, I actually would be, if, if no one else is interested, I'd be um, happy to step into the treasurer role. I've met with Rebecca, our current treasurer, a few times and prepared this buzz budget. So if mm -hmm. I could step into that role, uh, I, so I, can, that I would also, I, I can I would take be over secretary. secretary if you need to step into treasurer, I guess, because secretary is a thing I've done before with taking memos and whatnot for uh, meeting notes. Yes. If you, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can type the things up. Oh, amazing. Abra. I was just going to say, can we start nominating Abra as secretary and Kate as treasurer? <laughs> and Claire as chair? Sure. Is there anyone else who has thoughts or, or, or interest in any of these roles? I think Sonia is a uh, child Jim at large. <laughs> We just do this all day. I'm still 100% here. <laughs> I love it. Being a parent rep is not too much work. If anybody, you know, wants to dip their toes into the water, so to speak. I would, um, yeah, I would be interested. I said that before. I'm not sure if that was gotten down. And it would yep. be, since my kid is receiving homebound education, it's really hard to find ways to connect with the with the community and kind of keep my, you know, ear to the ground and know what's happening. Cause I've never, I've never even been to Marcy to the building. Um, <laughs> and my kids never been there. So I, I would love the opportunity and it's something I can absolutely do and would love to do. So. 
Cool. There's, there's also a parent Facebook group for anybody who's on Facebook to, um, that would like additional information. And that link is in the chat. It's kind of hard to just search for, but it, somebody did share it, so it is in the chat. My understanding is that you request access, right? And then one of the admins has to accept you. Is that okay? Yeah. So yes, it's from a, one of the admins. I don't I don't remember how that happened, but it's a private group, so you can't necessarily you can't see any of the posts or anything until after after you've joined. So is that a positive group now or for a while it was like a horrible, super negative, crazy group that I and I, I had to leave it. Over the summer it was so um I don't think anyone posted anything except stuff about middle school. So there'd be lots of questions about like some other school. It's and, a very uh, sleepy group from what yeah. I've seen of the recent posts, which is fine. Like, all right, well, maybe this, Michael let yeah. me back in. <laughs> I, I do not like Facebook. I'm like trying to slowly ease that out of my life. So. <laughs> I'll let you back in, then I'll sign off. Let me you. back in. Just, yep. I, I... I think Laura and Taylor both unmuted themselves. Maybe they want to volunteer as parent reps. Oh. I would be yeah, interested. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I, I would like to, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'd like to be a parent rep as well. Love it. This is fantastic. I just got back from uh, responding to my daughter about who was needed new batteries for something. So I've... I don't know what you all are talking about, but <laughs> I'm back now and I'm hearing something about parent reps. Well, yeah. since you were gone, you're now the president <laughs> of the whole thing. <laughs> Just, and works. you're in charge of the bake sale. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> uh, we were talking just about the um, the structure of, of, of the organization and how we are looking to fill the officer positions of um, chair, secretary, and treasurer, but then also that the larger, uh, what's called parent reps, which are kind of the, the board members, um, those are, there are open positions there as well. And, and those are folks that are like committing to coming um, to, to the meetings as well as the site council meetings, that which is the thing that happened before, the hour before, um, and, which will always happen this year, the hour before, they'll always be connected on one night. Um, and then there's like two additional board meetings of family connections um, throughout the year as well. Um, so we were, um, we had had, we had had, had had Claire suggestions of Claire um, assuming the chair position myself. I wrote secretary, that's not right. Treasurer, <laughs> Abra secretary, and then Laura Taylor, Taylor and Sonia all um, are interested in being parent reps. Mike said he would keep being a parent rep. Yes. Yeah. Correct. I don't think we need to vote on Mike to continue since you're already. And okay. Abra's going to be secretary. Secretary. Yeah. I'll take the minutes and do the typey things. Awesome. How many parent reps do you usually have or is desired? Um, is it saying our bylaws? Yeah, it says four to eight, so ideally eight. Because I just wanted to maybe just, I mean, I'm a new parent, so I don't know how this all works, but just to note that it seems like this is a predominantly white group of parents, which isn't really representative of Marcy as a whole. So I wonder if there are ways um, before we assign all the parent rep positions to um, include other voices as well. We yeah. can, Kate, correct me if I'm wrong, but we can add parent reps throughout the year, right? So it, they don't all have to be added at this one meeting. True, yes, right? that's correct. So we can add people who are interested this evening and then also open it throughout in future meetings too. Absolutely. And perhaps making it clear that this is a meeting that can be phoned into, that you do not require a computer and a Zoom, a a, like a laptop camera to be able to participate, might help expand accessibility because all Zoom meetings do have the phone-in option. That's a great point. 
Um, and it sounds like we at this point would not be electing a vice chair. So there, there would also be an additional officer position open um, if someone was interested at, at a future meeting as well. Um, but thank you for bringing that up, Emmy. And I will uh, acknowledge that historically that has been um, an issue with, with family connections is that um, the, the folks that we've had participating are, have not been a, a good representative um, group for, their, for the demographics of the school. And that absolutely, that has been something that we have discussed and are always interested in continuing to try to figure out how to make this uh, a more accessible space, a space that's more representative of, of the student population and the experiences of our students um, and, and making it more relevant, right? So uh, not assuming that everyone wants to be part of this group or that this group is, is doing the, the things that are um, most interesting to most parents, right? So, so trying to expand um, who, who is involved with this group and what this group does and what are the right topics for this group. So in the interest of moving forward, knowing that we're um, suggesting leaving one um, officer position open if we are um, uh, moving forward with uh, Claire, myself and Abra and parent reps of Sonia, Laura and Taylor um, and, and the option of having more parent reps join throughout the year as interested. Um, would anyone like to make a motion to do you think we can do them all at once? Do we have to do, can we do it as like a slate of candidates? I put a motion on the floor oh. to um, approve all of the people that have put their names forward on, on the ballot, I guess. It can be such um, efficiency. I love it. Anyone second? Second. Was that clear? Okay. Um, all in favor, say aye, raise your hand, put the little emoji thing up, whatever you want to do. Aye. Anyone opposed or abstaining? Okay, seeing none, the motion passes. Congratulations to everybody. This is very exciting to have all your new faces and returning faces. I'm so excited for this year with all of you on board and more to come, right? More folks as we move forward in the year. Um, if you haven't already put your email address in the chat, could you do that? You can do it to me directly if you want not to share it with everyone or just put it in so that I can start reaching out and making connections with everyone. Um, that would be great. So that we can that we can start being in contact. But this is awesome. I want to do the little celebration emoji, but I have too many things happening on my screen, so I'm not sure I can do that right now. But thank you, everyone. Um, I want to be conscious of time because this has been a long time for folks to be on Zoom. So um, we are really quickly going to um, talk about the parent directory. Um, Claire, do you want to talk about that? New, new chair, Claire. Sure. So the parent directory is um, <clears throat> something where where families, I, you know, maybe we should rename it the family directory, right? Because we're not all parents. Some of us are guardians or caregivers. Um, but uh, the family directory where where folks can opt in by putting their contact information in, and that way families can connect with one another um, um, outside of class. If you want to, you know, be like, oh, I want to connect with Harriet's family because my kid's been asking to have a play date with Harriet or uh, whatever the case may be. Um, we have started doing it, but we would like to get more folks involved, right? Because the more people who are on the directory, the better uh, and more effective it is. 
Um, and I know that Sydney put it in the parent press, was it last week? Um, and so uh, I think we want to keep doing that um, so that we can we can get more more folks information. I just checked right before the meeting and we um, have had 15 families um, fill out the form so far, which is great. I have not done uh, the second step yet of um, taking those form submissions and then putting them into a Google spreadsheet, which then I share access with all the other families that have also filled the form out. So it's like a, you have to opt in to get, to get the contact info, right? Like you have to share your info and then you'll be able to see everyone else's who has shared and only folks that share and fill out the form are granted access to the to the form so i will update it with those 15 people and then we can we continue to to add folks as as they sign up and then hopefully enough folks in everybody's classes and grades um will participate so that they have a good way to connect with each other um, in their teachers classes if you're looking to get more folks um on which i imagine we are i, I wonder if conferences could be a time for that and could just have like a little iPad or something set up that people could enter their info in when they, oh, I guess they're not coming, um, <laughs> but virtually. <laughs> totally. Um, so I would just add that for the directory information, it might be useful to specify that you only get to the other kids information if you give your own, which I don't think was clear from the form. Okay. And also to make it um, clear that you don't have to give like detail, like I just put our neighborhood in our address because currently Marcy is going from all over the Twin Cities and some people might feel really weird giving their actual address, but if they're just like, oh, I'm in the Powderhorn neighborhood, that makes it a little bit easier for them to give that information knowing that they don't have to be like, address specific you can be a little bit more free and fluid with how you interpret the directions that's a great point i can change the form itself to like have a a little disclaimer about that at our last school we had a lot of problems connect like collecting this kind of directory information because it was a it's how it has to be an opt-in not an opt-out and then we ended up having like three kids per class which is not very useful for all the for all the things but yeah making it more clear that it's you know you can get a little bit of information and it still goes in the directory you still have access then that's super helpful um so we will continue to promote that and um update that as we get more participation. Um, I am, did Sydney hop off? I think she did. Um, okay, Sydney was hoping to talk a little bit about what Fall Fun Fest is, but since we aren't going to have it this year because of COVID, hopefully she can maybe give us some, pass along some of her knowledge at, at a future meeting so that um, we don't lose Fall Fun Fest knowledge. Turn to me what you look, I just keep thinking maybe if the world changes a little bit and becomes more COVID safe for us, we could do a spring fling. Maybe. Crossing all my fingers. Right. As I currently have one of the children who is quarantined at home. <laughs> um, okay, so with just three minutes left, I do just wanna call your attention to the bottom of the agenda, the, the upcoming events. So I think we mentioned during the budget part that the online, the virtual book fair is happening in years past. This has happened like in the media center, in the library itself, and kids can come down and like pick out their books in person. Since we aren't gonna do that this year, it's happening online. So this is the online Scholastic Book Fair. The link is in the agenda there. Um, it starts on October 25th and goes to November 2nd. And all of the, the funds that are raised from all of the like profits from this will then um, be funneled back to our media center specialist who is then able to purchase new new items new books for for the school library so it's like a direct book to book 
kind of um, topical fundraiser, which I think is wonderful. And, you know, if you're like me and remember scholastic book fairs from when you were young, there's some excitement around that package of new books in the mail as well. Hey, Kate, I have yeah. a question about with it being online. I know when it's in person, it's easy to like um, donate extra funds to like a teacher's fund. So, te you know, all kids can get a new book. Um, is, is that an option with it online? Like, is there like a general fund? And then I don't know even how like it would be determined who gets what book and all that. So maybe it's just way too complicated online. Oh, is Abra, Abra knows? Um, so we did this last year at my old school and obviously different school, different situation might not apply. Um, but we did do an actual, like a drive up grab book. And we just did kind of a, like, you could choose a grade range and pay for a certain like grab bag of books that were for that grade range. And I don't know how they coordinated. Unfortunately, I wasn't part of the planning committee for this, but there was an option to allow you to do that. And, and because of the way we did it, we were also able to provide um, books for kids who did not have that initial payment. But we had a, we had a physical on the spot purchase option, which I think is important when you're doing the awesome virtual, virtual scholastic book fair, which is really awesome. You can buy whatever you want, but having something in person drive through, hi, I'm between grades one and four and I want the book bag, you know, that's, that's a little bit different. And they had it last year. I don't know if it's available this year or just, you know, thoughts. I don't, I don't know what the options are, but it was an option. It worked pretty well from what I could see. I will, I can speak a little bit to that because we had to make some decisions when we were signing up for our book fair and we signed up for a hundred percent virtual because we did not know we had a deadline for when we had to do it and we didn't know what, where we were going to be. So we figured we'd pick the safest option, but, um, you know, in the spring, it might be an option if we do, you know, sometimes we do two a year in the spring, right? That sounds familiar. Is that right? Um, maybe we could consider something then, especially if parents are able to come in and help volunteer. Maybe we'll see. That is absolutely fair. That makes 100% sense if you're doing 100% virtual. And yeah, with circumstances, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So to be clear, there's no like fund or anything with this virtual option to provide books to kids that aren't able to purchase them? Um, I'm not sure about that, but I, I have the contact of the scholastic book person that I can ask how we can facilitate that. And get back to everybody. Thanks, or Jenny. share it with Kate and we'll put information in the parents press. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks, Trinity. Um, okay. The last thing is um, just the next meeting. So second Thursdays of every month. So their next meeting will be on Thursday, November 11th, uh, again, with site council at six and family connections at seven using the same link um, that you had today. And, and to, uh, I think it was maybe Abra, I can't remember whose point, um, to uh, also publicize that you can call in as well and, and list that phone number for calling in and not just Zooming in, which is fantastic. Anything else before we go? We're two minutes over, I know. Last burning questions or thoughts? It was fantastic seeing you all. Welcome to the new parents and, and your kiddos. Thank you everyone for staying for two hours. Um, and I motion to adjourn the meeting. Thanks all, I'll be in touch with everybody. Have a good night.